Introducing Bediou Zaman, Wonder of the Millennium. World-renowned scholar Bediou Zaman Said Nursi was and continues to be one of the most phenomenal spiritual masters of all time, and indeed, certainly the most extraordinary luminary of this millennium. His one-of-a-kind masterpiece, the Rizali Eid Nur collection, which translates into English as the Treaties of Light, consists of over 130 books and has been time-tested for accuracy and trust by multiple disciplines. Translated into over 60 languages, Bediou Zaman's Rizali Inur continues to positively influence and benefit millions of people of all walks of life around the world and remains a growing phenomenon globally. His name, Bediou Zaman, means wonder of the age. At the remarkable young age of 15, he demonstrated publicly his unprecedented ability of winning all debates against multiple groups of the most eminent scholars in his region. Additionally, Bediou Zaman accomplished the academic excellence in only three months' time, educating himself extensively and thoroughly in all the traditional religious sciences as well as most of the modern sciences. These are but a few of Bediou Zaman's many exceptional abilities. His brilliance and superior genius, according to some, is likened to that of Albert Einstein. Bediou Zaman Said Nursi devoted his entire life to helping and guiding people understand and obtain genuine belief in God. He was actively involved in public life, teaching students, debating scholars, etc. This time is referred to as the Old Said. Bediou Zaman transitioned into the New Said shortly after World War I and withdrew altogether from public life and politics, concentrating instead on study and prayer. The New Said was a man of deep thought contemplation and reflection. In 1925, he was unjustly exiled for life, though he had committed no crime or misdemeanor. During his exile, he often suffered imprisonment and isolation. However, it was during these reflective years that he wrote his masterpiece, the rizali e Collection. Bedou Zaman understood that the essential cause of the decline of religion was due to the weakening of the very foundations of belief. This weakening, along with the attacks on these foundations in the 19th and 20th centuries, carried out by materialists, atheists, and others in the name of science and progress, led him to realize that the most urgent and overriding need was to strengthen, even to save, belief. What was needed was to expand all efforts to reconstruct the edifice of religion from its foundations of belief, and to answer at the level of those attacks through peaceful dialogue, or War of the Word. Thus, in his exile, Bediou Zaman, through his Rizali Inor, explained and expounded the basic tenets of belief and truths of religion to modern man. He discovered and introduced a unique methodology, whereby belief in God can be confirmed through reasoning. His discovery provides people a shortcut to truth, purpose, and reality of existence, essentially making available to all mankind a more realistic, but genuine and authentic fast-track path to enlightenment. Notably, his unparalleled methodology leaves the individual without any doubt regarding belief in God. It, in essence, proves God. Bediou Zaman's methodology goes beyond all religions, and its applicability is thus inherently into faith, and it provides those doubting or disbelieving in God a clear-cut means to confirm God. Confirmation of God strengthens belief, and replaces weak imitative beliefs commonly held and acquired by merely adopting what parents or teachers believe or what they tell their children and students to believe. Bediou Zaman was a firm believer in science and emphasized that science and religion are indeed not separate. Rather, science necessarily points directly to religion. Bediou Zaman utilizes and incorporates the modern sciences in his explanations throughout the Rizeli Inor and answers the three most difficult questions of mankind. Number one, what am I? Number two, where do I come from? And number three, where am I going? He proves the existence of God in the afterlife with the certainty of 2 plus 2 equals 4. He demonstrates in the form of easily understood stories, comparisons, explanations, and reasoned proofs that, rather than the truths of religion being incompatible with the findings of modern science, the materialist interpretation of these findings is irrational and absurd. Indeed, he proves in his Rizali Inur that science's breathtaking discoveries of the universe's functioning corroborate with and reinforce the truths of religion. The talisman of creation and the meaning of life are solved with his methodology. 
Bedou Zaman brings all people closer to God and answers the fundamental need of man to know his maker better than anyone, crystal clear. Bedou Zaman's methodology in the Rizali Inur directs man to consider the universe and its functioning in order to learn its true nature and purposes as the creation and thus to learn the attributes of its single creator and his own duties as a created being. He explains the true nature of the universe as signs of its creator and demonstrates through clear arguments that when it is read as such, all fundamentals of belief may be proved rationally. When this method is followed, a person attains a true belief that will be sound and firm enough to withstand any doubts that may arise in the face of the subtle attacks of materialism, naturalism and atheism, or the materialist approach to scientific advances. For all scientific and technological advances are merely the uncovering of the workings of the cosmos. When the cosmos is seen to be a vast and infinitely complex and meaningful unified book describing its single author, rather than causing doubt and bewilderment, all these discoveries and advances reinforce belief, they deepen and expand it. Bedi Uzaman was a man of immense peace, sincerity and brotherhood. He shunned politics and forbid his students from participating in any political activities, though he practiced regular voting as did his students. Public safety and security was always a prominent part of Bedi Uzaman's teachings. Peace was the hallmark of his life and remains the centerpiece of his works. He believed strongly in and practiced dialogue as the means of change and solving problems, rather than ever resorting to any kind of weaponry or physical aggression. He predicted that dialogue would become the way of the future, rather than weaponry and war. Bedi Uzaman states, At the end of time, eloquence and beauty of expression, the most brilliant of the sciences and branches of knowledge will be the most sought after in all their varieties. Even in order to make one another accept their ideas and carry out their word, men will find the most effective weapon in eloquent expression and their most irresistible force in fine oratory. Man's most fundamental need is the need for religion, the need to recognize and worship Almighty God with His most beautiful names and attributes and to obey His laws, those manifested in the universe and those revealed through His prophets. Bedu Zaman Sayyid Nursi demonstrates in the Rizali Nur that there is no contradiction or dichotomy between science and religion. Rather, true progress and happiness for mankind can and will only be achieved in this way, the way of belief in God. Examples of Bedu Zaman's powerful teachings If you find God, you have found everything. Since Almighty God exists, everything exists. Since there is a pre-eternal and a post-eternal God, most certainly there is the hereafter. There is nothing that makes impossible the gathering of resurrection and much that necessitates it. The glorious and eternal Lordship, the almighty and all-embracing sovereignty of the one who gives life and death to this vast and wondrous earth as if it were a mere animal, who has made this earth a pleasing cradle, a fine ship, for man and the animals who has made the sun a lamp furnishing light and heat to the holstery of the world, who has made the planets vehicles for the conveyance of his angels, the lordship and sovereignty of such a one cannot rest upon and be restricted to the transitory, impermanent, unstable, insignificant, changeable, unlasting, deficient and imperfect affairs of this world. He must therefore have another realm, one worthy of him, permanent, stable, immutable and glorious. Indeed, he does have another kingdom and it is for the sake of this that he causes us to labor, and to this that he summons us. O oh man, do you want to make your brief and useless life immortal, long beneficial and fruitful? Since such a wish is demanded by humanity, spend your life on the way of the truly everlasting one, because everything turned to the everlasting one receives the manifestation of immortality. Life is a sort of manifestation of unity within multiplicity, and therefore leads to unity. Life makes one thing the owner of everything. Beings are visible through light, and their existence is known through life. Both are revealers. Through the light of belief, man rises to the highest of the high, and acquires a value worthy of paradise. Just as belief is a light which illuminates man, 
and makes legible all the missives of the eternally besought one inscribed upon him. So too it illuminates the universe, and delivers the past and the future from darkness. Belief is both light and strength. Yes, one who acquires true belief may challenge the whole universe, and be saved from the pressure of events, in accordance with the strength of his belief. Saying, I place my trust in God, he travels through the mountainous waves of events, in the ship of life, in complete safety. Be certain of this, that the highest aim of creation and its most important result is belief in God. The most exalted rank in humanity and its highest degree is the knowledge of God contained within belief in God. The most radiant happiness and sweetest bounty for jinn and human beings is the love of God contained within the knowledge of God. O oh man, do you know the way you are going and where you are being driven? As it is stated at the end of the 32nd word, a thousand years of happy life in this world cannot be compared to one hour of life in paradise. And a thousand years of life in paradise cannot be compared to one hour's vision of the sheer loveliness of the beauteous one of glory. You are going to the realm of his mercy and to his presence.